a little box elder bug crawling around in the, in the chancel, so we just had to move him off to the side for a little bit. Because this is God's house, uh, which is great. There's creatures in God's house, not only on the floor, but in the pews here today, which is great. We are all God's creatures, and he welcomes us into his house, into his home, just as he is going to also welcome today uh, Jesse, James Steidel. Yeah, you're smiling and just having a good time into his family as well. So welcome to all of you gathered here today at Good Shepherd. Uh, I'm Pastor Jonathan Jonke, and it's my honor uh, to be pastor here, and it is a joy to be able to gather around God's Word and be gathered into His house as He comes to us today to bring His gifts of life and salvation and forgiveness and joy to all of us. And we get the joy of seeing uh, God's miracle of baptism today. <clears throat> um, this morning, uh, we will be uh, focusing on our Old Testament reading, so uh, as we come to that in the service, pay special attention to that as uh, God speaks to us through His Word today. Other than that, uh, may God bless all of us today as we join together in singing our opening hymn, uh, Father Welcomes. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the sacrament of holy baptism found on page 268 in your hymnals. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Also in the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. The Apostle Peter 
has also written, Baptism now saves you. Together we say, Through Scripture, God convinces us that He works a mighty and mysterious miracle in baptism for all who believe. You may be seated. <clears throat> The Word of God also teaches that we all, are con when we are conceived, we are born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless we were delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So to you, Jake and Cassie, I ask you, how is your son to be named? Jesse James Steidel. Jesse James Steidel, receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ crucified and risen. Let us all pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. And yet, according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. And yet you led your holy people, Israel, through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing the washing of holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. So we pray that you would behold Jesse according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith so that by the Holy Spirit, through this saving flood, all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church that he be separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promise, Jesse would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens, that is, those who are taught the faith. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith that is expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to be witnesses of the baptism of those that they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction in the Christian faith, and to encourage them towards a faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to those, their sponsor of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. <clears throat> so I ask you both, is it your intention to serve Jesse as sponsors of the Christian faith? If so, say yes with the help of God. Then I pray that God would enable you and each of you to will and to do this faithful and loving work which we are unable to do without his grace, that he would fulfill it. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them and lay his hands on them. But his disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child receives will by no means enter it. So Jesus took them up in his arms and he put his hands on them and he blessed them. Please stand as you are able and let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Because Jesse cannot answer for himself, I invite the parents, sponsors, and the witnesses to speak faithfully 
on his behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sins and new life that he now receives. So I ask you, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was suffered under, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Then let us uh, welcome all the kids forward. Children, if you want to come forward at this time, we can make a couple rows and sit up here. We're going to watch our brother in Christ get baptized. Thank you. Come here, buddy. Hi. You are so light. It is so great. <clears throat> come on up here. You can come closer, Everly, if you want. We've got lots of space. You guys can sit right around here. This is uh, uh, Jesse. Yeah, you can sit right there, Colton. That's perfect. That is perfect. This is our friend Jesse. He's going to become our new brother. <gasps> and you brought Jesus back. Can, can, can I have, have Jesus back? This is so great. Normally, we would, we would talk about Jesus today. Well, we are going to talk about Jesus. You can sit back down. That's great. But um, what's your sister's name again? Yeah. What is it? Ivy. Ivy brought Jesus back for our children's message. And today we're going to actually see God do a powerful work in, in and through Jesse because Jesus was baptized too. Raise your hand if you've been baptized. Yeah, last week we got to see a baptism and Jesse's trying to raise his hand, but he'll be baptized here soon. This is so great. Did you know that Jesus was baptized too? Yeah, Jesus was baptized. But Jesus never sinned, did he? Yeah. No, Jesus never sinned. So, but you and I have sinned, haven't we? Yeah. In our, in our baptisms, though, we were joined to Jesus' baptism. And because he did not sin, we now get our sins taken away in our baptism. So Jesus is our brother, and Jesse is going to become our brother through baptism. Can you say, hi, Jesse? That was great. Good job, Jesse. That's great. Can you say hi to your new brother? Say hi, brother. Hi, brother. This is going to become your new brother in Jesus. Should we watch him get baptized? Jesus is going to do an amazing work. Yeah, you do have, there is a baby in your mommy's tummy. Yeah, that is great. This is great. So Jesus is going to save Jesse and the Holy Spirit is going to bring Jesse into faith. And God, our Father, is going to make him our brother. Should we watch? You guys can come closer if you want to. All right. All right. Jesse James Steidel, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you of all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Uh, boys and girls, we're going to give uh, his parents some, some things. There's a gift over there for you as well. We're going to give him this white garment to them. It's a little wet. <laughs> to show that Jesse, see what color he is wearing? What color is he wearing? white to show that all his sins have been removed from him in Jesus and they will always be removed in Jesus and I'll take that candle now <laughs> yeah and we're also going to give them a candle so that Jesse would always remember that Jesus is the light of the world for him and he lives Jake you can take Cassie you can take that candle it doesn't matter either one 
But Jesse will always remember now, he'll have his parents and his sponsors teach him that Jesus is the light of the world for him, and he gets to shine that light for everyone wherever he goes. You can blow that out. All right. Uh, we will continue with a word of prayer. We'll come right up here. Thank you. Can you turn the page? Oh, before we pray, why don't we welcome him into the family? In holy baptism, God the Father has made Jesse a member of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesse is an heir with all of us in the treasures of heaven, in the holy Christian, in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. So, Jesse, we receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us stand for prayer. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that graciously that you have graciously preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Jesse the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he now has become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life with all your saints and with all your saints obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Children, you can return back to your seats, and why don't we clap and welcome Jesse into the family. <laughs> you can head back to your seats, too. <clears throat> Since all of Jesse's sin has been drowned and died, let us also stand together now and let us lay down our own sins at the feet of Jesus. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we pause for a moment of silence to reflect on our own sin. <coughs> o Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your groundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and rise for you, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Let us pray. 
O God, your prophets who served before your Son and our Lord during his time on earth commanded loving you above all else and our neighbors as ourselves. Grant that your Holy remind us of our baptism into Christ so that we may confidently respond to and share your love in word and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for today comes from Leviticus chapter 19, verses 1 through 2, and verses 15 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of all of Israel and say to them, Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. and Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against, any, against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The lesson today is from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 1 through 13. It's found on 11, page 1169 through 1170 in your pew Bible. You know, brothers, that our visit to you was not a failure. We had previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of God, we dared to tell you his gospel in spite of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We're not trying to please men, but God who tests our hearts. You know, we never used flattery, nor did we put a mask on to cover up greed, for God is our witness. We're not looking for praise from men, not from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you, with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We work day and night in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel to you. You are witness, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dwelt with, dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually because you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able out of reverence for the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. We sing together.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. And one of them, an expert in the law of Moses, tested him with these questions. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we continue with our hymn of the day, which is worthy of worship. mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Henry Garrick served as the Protestant chaplain for 15 of 21 men that were on trial, set to be sentenced. He served them from 1945 to 1946 as their chaplain for war crimes that they had committed during World War II. You may recognize this trial as the Nuremberg Trials. Pastor Henry Garrick ministered to one man named Henry Gehring. Gehring was and is infamous for 
the evil planning of the genocide of the Jews, which is known as the final solution. And yet, Henry Garrick ministered to him. Gehring never came to re repent of his sins despite over a year of ministry by Pastor Henry. But you can go on uh, YouTube and find the radio call after the Nuremberg trials where Garrick is recounting his experience and his ministry to those 15 men. And you can listen to Garrick tell of all these different stories. And in a way... It humanizes those people. Doesn't make their actions any more human than we like to admit, but they begin to sound like real people that committed real atrocities to other real people. Hermann Goering never came to repent of his sins, but Garrick, the pastor, Pastor Henry, shared in that radio call a moment where he had his final conversation with Goering. And Pastor Henry listened as Goering described his last interaction before he was led to the gallows when he talked with his wife. Goering's wife came and visited him, and despite Gehring's own unbelief, Gehring said to his wife, I want our little, little daughter, Etta, to know and follow the Savior. Seems kind of odd for a man that did everything but follow the Savior. When he responded to his wife, his wife looked at him and told about a conversation that she had just had with their daughter before she had left to come visit Herman. She said, Etta had something to say to you. She said, I hope to see Daddy in heaven. It's safe to say we would not call Herman Gehring a holy man. And it's easy for us to point at a man like him and say, that is a person that I would least like to be like. <laughs> I don't want to emulate him in any way, shape, or form. His daughter, though, probably didn't know anything he had done, the evil and the atrocities that he had committed. And yet, she still hoped that her father would be with her in heaven and she would see him there. Isn't it strange that he wanted her to be raised to know and follow the Savior and, when, and yet when she wanted the same exact thing for him, all, she, all he could do was turn away. After that conversation with his wife, he walked back to his cell. Pastor Henry came and visited him, and they talked about what had happened. And when he had heard his, his daughter and her words of, I hope to see Daddy in heaven, he told Pastor Henry with tears streaming down his face, that was the moment I knew I had died. It took holy words from a child to get through to an unholy man who had done evil and unholy, unthinkable things to millions of people. Although Gehring had not yet been executed, he realized that there was not something right in himself. When you consider the kind of person that you are, if you were to describe yourself to people or who you aspire to be someday, would you ever use the word holy? 
Probably not. Even despite us being completely unlike Hermann Goering, we would probably never refer to ourselves as holy. But in Leviticus chapter 19, verses 1, and all the way through 18, we are brought into a conversation between God and Moses, where God says to Moses, speak to the congregation of all of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy, for I am the Lord your God, and I am holy. God calls all of his people holy. And it's kind of a new thing for the Israelites. I mean, just in the previous book, in Exodus, God had reclaimed all of his people from slavery of 400 years and brought them out of the land of Egypt. And the first time he calls them holy is in Exodus chapter 19. God says, you will be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. And then just 11 chapters, 13 chapters after that, <laughs> they build the golden calf. They worship a false idol and they turn away from God. It's not evil and atrocities like Gehring, and yet the very God who called them out of slavery, they turned away and they worshiped their own God that they created rather than the one who created them. So this is only the third time in Leviticus chapter 19 when God says, you shall be holy. And for the rest of the entire book, for all the book of Leviticus, God lays out what holiness is and how it should be in the lives of his people. God defines holiness. In his definition, God gives two parts to holiness. First, holiness in simple terms, if you were to think of it, it simply means being different. Set apart differently from the things that look normal so you can live differently. Just like God is different. That's the first part of God's definition. It's, it's kind of like, you know, that, that fine bottle of wine that you have sitting in your cabinet that you want to use for a special occasion, right? And then when family and friends come over and there's a celebration, like maybe a, a baptism, later in the evening you pop open that bottle and you think of all the wonderful things that you have experienced in waiting up for that moment, and then when you look back on that moment, you remember that, oh yeah, it was just a bottle of wine, but there was something different about it because it had been set aside for a special day, for a special purpose. Although it was different, it ended up being used for a special thing. The second part of God's definition of holiness comes and flows from the first. Since God makes us different and set apart like himself, that should flow out towards other people. Holiness should affect the lives of those around us. God says so much in verses 1 and verse 18. He says, I am the Lord your God. You shouldn't have any other gods and you should be holy like me. And then in verse 18, he says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus summarizes that in Matthew chapter 22 when he says, these are the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, heart and then mind, and with all your soul. And the second is like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. but I can see some of you right now, and um, knowing what holiness is doesn't tell us why it's important. 
You can know the definition of holiness inside, outside, backwards and upwards and forwards, and you can describe it in all different kinds of ways. You know the kinds of experiences that happen when holiness comes into your life and you experience it for yourself. For me, I often think about special times like Christmas. Yes, the snow is coming. <laughs> we didn't get it this weekend, but it is coming. Especially when we celebrate Christmas together as God's family. It's a holy time. It's different than the hustle and bustle that we often experience during the year. But just knowing holiness doesn't always transform our behavior. When you think about if you would call yourself holy... You might not say yes. I would say that about myself. Hermann Goering knew that there was something unholy about himself, and he died when his daughter hoped that he would be in heaven with her. It wasn't before his earthly life was taken. It was when he realized he was spiritually dead before the Lord. Now, you might not consider yourself on the same level as Hermann Goering, but would you call yourself holy? Consider God's standard of holiness. In the beginning of the service, we said, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So before we, lest we deceive ourselves, think about God's measure of holiness. Have we loved and cared for that coworker who gets on our nerves? What about our son or our daughter? Have we loved them as we love ourselves? Have you loved God? and trusted in Him above all things, above the money issues that you might be facing, above the, the distresses of what's going on in your child's life and you don't know about it. Have you trusted in those things? Have you hoped in your own plans for your life above God's forgiveness and salvation? We may not call ourselves holy because inherently we know what Gehring knew as well. We have sinned and fallen short of the glory or the holiness of God. But lest you walk out of here deceiving yourselves again, remember what we said next. We spoke God's word to ourselves and it was spoken over us. We went on to say, but if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And when God cleanses people from unrighteousness, he makes them holy. He makes them right before himself. In that moment, God spoke to all of us. Just like he spoke to the Israelites through Moses and he said, you are holy. When we confess our sins to our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, his Son, stands in our place and he says to our Heavenly Father, I want them to be with me in heaven. And God says, but they aren't holy. And Jesus says, but I am for them. And because I am in them, so are they. And instead of making us walk out of here in shame, sadness, or guilt, instead of making us walk to our own gallows, God takes us, and he makes us holy through Jesus. God did that for Jesse. When Jesse was brought over here by his parents, 
who were baptized too, Jake and Cassie who were baptized, and they brought their son up here, and God spoke over him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And his name, although it is Jesse James Steidel, now forever will be God's holy child. His son, just like Jesus, who is his son. This child is holy even though he can have some unholy screams sometimes. (laughs) All the sins in his life have been drowned and died. They will forever be drowned and be dead in Jesus. No matter what sins he will commit from here on out, he will always be able to know that he is holy because we have been called holy and now we can say to him, you are holy even when you feel unholy, even when you know you're unholy, even when you can look at your life and say, I haven't done as bad of things as Gehring, you can still say, I still need to be made holy. And God will do that for you and has done that for you just as he has done it for Jesse. Jesse is now different. He's holy. He is set apart just like we are. And that feels good. It feels great to know that God has declared all of us to be different. And yet knowing that does not always change our behavior, but here is what does. God makes us holy Not so that we would sit and condemn or even ignore an unholy world and unholy people. Holy people are not to sit back and do nothing. Holy people are set apart for a different special use. They are set apart to love God and to love our neighbors. God has set us apart to serve the holy and the unholy. Holiness is given to us by God and from God so that by our life that we have in Jesus, we would serve others with holy acts of love and mercy. Think of Pastor Henry. For a year, to no avail, it seemed like he was not breaking through Herman Goering and his hard steel exterior through his evil acts. And yet, Pastor Henry did not stop bringing him God's word. And when Etta finally gave holy words to her unholy father, all that work that had been done before by Pastor Henry finally came to fruition. Holy people may not always see the good works and the good fruit that come forth, but you might be preparing it for someone else. That's what it took for Gehring to realize his own sin. Here at church, you are declared to be holy, but it does not remain here within these doors. You can look back and see that the doors are wide open, that holiness is ready to depart from this place and go out into the world. After having a week of being worn down by the world, tired out and exhausted, here you have been refreshed by the holiness of God. During this service, you get to see it modeled for you by the one sitting next to you as they sing hymns, as they say God's word to you, as God's word is spoken from here out to you. And the reason it's modeled to you here is so that when you're at home, you would have children honor their father and their mothers and live lives of holiness and practice it in the home so that when you are outside of your home, you would practice living holy lives for those who are around you, for your neighbors, your co-workers, and even strangers. Holy lives treat other people differently. They do not seek to tear them down and cut them down. 
when you experience people who are crushed by unholy living, Jesus comes forth from you and he gives, their sacri- gives his sacrifice through you to an unholy person. That's what his sacrifice is for. It's to be brought by you to unholy lives to forgive, heal, and restore them. He is our Lord, our God. You all shall be holy as he is holy. You may not be able to call yourself holy, but you don't need to worry about calling yourself holy, for God has called you holy already. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep and guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, for the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the educational institutions of our synod, for our preschools, our day schools, especially Zion Lutheran School and high schools, our colleges and universities, and for our seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them to holy lives in the home of our Holy Father. Let us pray to the Lord. For the government and all who have been set in positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them to honorably, to, to them honorably and for the good of the people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who serve in worthy occupations, professions, arts, sciences, and sciences, that God would grant them skill and integrity in the performance of their responsibilities and valued service through their vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, for Gaylord Knack, Abby Schreiber, Laura Schinnebarger, Carol Chorley, Paul Wilkin, Patty Stennis, Don Wilkie, Mike McDaniel, John D., Mike Newen, Ron Rogers, Naomi During, Paul During, Michelle Wren, Spencer Thorsland, Mark Peterson, Evelyn Bulkey, Addie Mork, Bob Taylor, Luca Hausman, Judy Shorter, Leon Wunderlich, and Wayne Hobbin, that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers and deliver and preserve us, for to you alone We give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we collect our tithes and our offerings.
Jesus Christ, the giver of all good gifts, our thanksgiving overflows for the life you created in us and the new life we now have in you through holy baptism. Continue to shower us with your gifts as we offer thanksgiving for our ongoing communion with you in your body and blood. As you have enlarged your family today, grant that these gifts would cause the ministry here to continue bearing fruit for your family, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We continue by singing our closing hymn by faith. peace and know that uh, you are all holy because he is and has called you such just a few announcements before uh, announcements before we head out um, this morning there's a confirmation Sunday school high school youth group and uh, 
uh, Bible study. We're studying the book of Revelation in adult Bible class, so if you want to come to that, uh, you're more than welcome to. Also, this afternoon, there's Trunk and Treat, which will be uh, cold but great and lots of fun, so why don't we uh, come and have a good time with that. There's lots of people here and in the community that are very excited for it, so that is great. Uh, that's from 2.30 to 4.30. Also, uh, today is Divine Drama meeting today uh, from 3 to 4.30. Uh, so um, Divine Drama will be meeting from 3 to 4.30. And then later this evening, no chosen Bible study. No, uh, we're all, no, no chosen tonight. Um, no chosen Bible study tonight. But at 7 p.m. Uh, tonight is the Alexandria Circuit. So the area-wide ch uh, churches are having our Reformation worship service here tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll celebrate that and have that at 7 p.m. tonight. Also, no dart ball on Monday. And next Sunday uh, is, uh, what's it called, daylight savings time. So we're falling back an hour, so that's an extra hour of sleep. Is that how that works? Yes? Okay, great. I, I don't know what sleep is, so um, I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, <clears throat> uh, also coming up in November is the chili cook-off, so uh, start prepping and testing those recipes. Uh, if you've got any new recipes for the chili cook-off, uh, that's November 18th here at church from 5 to 7. Uh, any other announcements this morning? Uh, Henry. Just to remind you, So if you're on the executive council, you're not in trouble. There's just a short little thing that you've got you've to um, uh, uh, vote on. So meet in the library after service. Any other things? All right. Go in peace and serve the Lord and have a great day.